With 70% of the Earth's surface covered in water, it's no surprise that since the dawn of time, humankind has looked towards the sea as a source of food, wealth and prosperity. However, it can also be unforgiving and a place of tragedy, a fact we are reminded of too often these days with migrants risking their lives to reach Europe, here on the Mediterranean. Nowadays, we rely on modern satellite technology to monitor and aid human activities at sea. Satellites are the most powerful tools we have to receive information from the vast blue gaps of infrastructure which are our oceans and seas. Yeah, for maritime space has a broad uh, range of applications. Uh, you start uh, with, you have GPS, but you want to have also maybe a backup for making your position, location of the ships, so that's the Galileo system, which we are uh, installation from the European Space Agency. Then you have Earth observation, which is making uh, Earth observation satellites for radar and visual, which we also need to look at ships. And then we have telecommunication to transmit transponder signals, uh, communications forward and backward to the ships where I am working on. So that's the combination of all these things which contribute to the maritime uh, safety. These goals cannot be achieved by just one satellite. That's why you need to use the data from a fleet of satellites. With many of these satellites being developed by ESA, the European Space Agency plays a vital role in keeping the seas safe and helping people in need. ESA also develops and works on AIS, the Automatic Identifier System. This is a solution for identifying and locating vessels, which has been made mandatory by the International Maritime Organization for all big boats and passenger ships. Today, AIS information supplements marine radar, which continues to be the primary method of collision avoidance for water transport nowadays. The system is a collaborative system and if a captain does not switch on by intention or forgot or there is a failure in the equipment, you have not information. So then the task is how to detect ships which are not transmitting these identification signals. First, you can work a lot of algorithms to uh, detect, to distinguish a ship coming from this side or from this side. If the ship is transmitting, but not saying where I am, you can make a triangulation, then you know where the ship is, even if the ship doesn't tell you. And even if the ship is not using anything, you uh, can use radar images, and then you see the metal object in the ocean, and then you know there is a ship. An example of such radar satellites are the Sentinel satellites in low Earth orbit for the EU ESA Copernicus program. All this satellite data has to be processed, and this is done at EMSA, or the European Maritime Safety Agency in Lisbon. They cross-check the AIS identification data, for instance, with optical satellite images, and so they can see the ships that could be involved in illegal activities, such as human trafficking. This data is of huge help for Coast Guards, as they now can target ships that try to avoid detection. But the satellites not only keep us safe at sea, they also aid in protecting the seas from us. Satellites, even though not perfect, are an invaluable tool in combating pollution, such as an oil spill at sea. We want to know who is the vessel, who is the polluter. We can cross-check with the data we have in our other system, where we have the information on the ship positions. We can overlay this information, put it on top of the satellite image, and then you see nicely that the ship here exactly followed the, the spill itself. So here we have a perfect match. The seas and oceans are one of our most precious resources, and we must protect them to benefit ourselves. This is a task in which ESA continues to take the forefront, building and deploying Earth observation satellites, monitoring our seas, adding more satellites every year, and increasing the quality of services.